This is the General Dynamics YF-16 lightweight fighter prototype. One of the most exciting new aircraft to enter flight testing here at Edwards Air Force Base, California in many years. We've been making excellent progress in the YF-16 flight test program. The airplane is demonstrating performance that either meets or exceeds the design forecast. We'll show you the flight test results a little later. But first, I'd like to point out a few of the YF-16's advanced features that work together to provide exceptional performance and maneuverability. The YF-16 is a fighter pilot's fighter. So it's appropriate that we start right here in the cockpit. The canopy is one piece polycarbonate material. Note that the bow frame is behind the pilot where it belongs. The canopy is distortion free and provides unprecedented visibility. In fact, aft visibility is so good you can check your own speed brake position and see your own contrail. The seat is installed at a 30 degree back angle compared to the conventional 13 degrees. This feature has been well received. It increases pilot G tolerance by decreasing the height of his bloodstream fluid column. The usual and most relaxed pilot position is to keep the head erect during normal operations. The headrest is used only in high G maneuvers. Added G tolerance is provided by the raised heel rest line. The side stick and armrest permit precise tracking and maneuvering. One of the new technologies incorporated in the YF-16 is a fly-by-wire flight control system. An analog computer issues commands to the control surface servos through four independent paths. These paths are electrical wire, hence the term fly-by-wire. Because of this system, the airplane can be maneuvered to its limits without being stalled or structurally damaged. Fly-by-wire also makes possible application of the control configured vehicle principle. In the YF-16, this results from moving the aircraft center gravity aft, providing added maneuverability at all speeds and less trim drag at supersonic speed. YF-16 is small, just 46 and one half feet long with a 30 foot wingspan. The vertical tail stands 16 feet three inches above ground level. Comparison with other single-seat fighters is a good reference for aircraft size. It's comparable in size to the highly respected P-51, which actually has more wingspan than the YF-16. The MiG-21 is longer and has a greater radar cross-section. It's also quite a bit smaller than the well-known F-4. The purpose of the four-body strakes is to produce added lift through vortices over the wing and horizontal stabilizers. This vortex system also maintains directional stability at high angles of attack. As a result, we expect it will be very difficult to stall or spin the airplane. The engine air inlet is mounted beneath the fuselage where the air is least disturbed through the maneuver range. The nose gear is located aft of the inlet to reduce the chances of foreign objects being drawn into the engine during ground operation. The M61 Gatling gun is mounted above the strake and away from the inlet to minimize the ingestion of gun gases. This is our number two prototype. It's equipped with a gun sight and fire control system. It's easy to get the impression that the YF-16 is strictly an air-to-air -air machine. Actually, the airplane can carry a very respectable payload for air-to-ground missions, nearly 9,000 pounds of missiles and bombs. We've been using the number one prototype for performance evaluation and to expand the flight envelope. I'd like to show you what we've accomplished. We're delighted with the overall handling qualities. During taxi, the new checkout pilot experiences the force rudder pedals for the first time. He quickly becomes a proponent of force controls. Directional control is crisp and honest, both on the ground and in flight.
Takeoff is pleasant. One feels very good acceleration from the F-100 engine. Level out at altitude arrives rapidly for the YF-16, even in military power. The usual full fuel climb continues to about 45,000 feet. The next action at this point is usually to stand by for the chase aircraft. Cruising at high altitudes is always a pleasure but even more so in the YF-16. There's a feeling of riding on top of the airplane rather than within it. Acceleration is one of the YF-16's two best features. Pratt & Whitney F-100 engine has five selectable zones of afterburning, the least of which provides supersonic flight at any altitude. The other best feature is that the YF-16 can make ultra-high G turns. As mentioned earlier, the airplane can be maneuvered to its ultimate without interior reference required and without possibility of stall or structural failure. We've made excellent progress in clearing the operating envelope, a job which is virtually complete. The first milestone was a 90-minute first flight of the number one prototype. We went supersonic on the third flight out to Mach 1.2. A 7.3G wind-up turn on flight eight. First afterburner takeoff on flight nine, along with envelope expansion to Mach 1.63. Flight 15 was the first flutter flight clearing points down to 5,000 feet indicated altitude. Flight 20, a speed of Mach 1.9 plus at 40,000 feet. The sixth pilot flew on flight 28, filling out the pilot pool. Two each from General Dynamics, the Air Force Flight Test Center, and Tactical Air Command. Flight 42 included a sustained turn at 7.7 Gs. First flight of the number two prototype was made in early May. There have been consecutive days on which we got off three flights, a most productive development in any test program. Normal fuel transfers were made during the aerial refueling demonstrations. The YF-16 has plenty of non-refueled range, essentially twice that of fighters now in service. It has a radius of action exceeding 500 nautical miles with combat allowance. Its ferry range is more than 2,000 nautical miles, transoceanic. We have now maneuvered the YF-16 to 9G.
In the landing pattern, the airplane is normally flown at 12 degrees angle to tack. As ground effect is entered, the usual technique is to have remaining throttle position and continue descent into a gentle touchdown. Then place the throttle to idle, lower the nose to the runway, open speed brakes and apply brakes. The stopping distance can be as short as 3,000 feet. The YF-16 is proof that an airplane can be designed to cost without sacrificing performance. The emphasis of the airplane design is on simplicity. Cost is kept at a minimum in the manufacturing process. Cost remains at a minimum in service through ease of maintenance and high reliability. At General Dynamics, we're convinced the air combat fighter of tomorrow is here today.